There are some things PCs can do that console games shouldn't. Call it division of labor, argue over superiority, I don't care. And sure, while there's been some cross-contamination that worked well, Goldeneye resting dominance in the FPS sector, or the Super Nintendo version of SimCity, which was pretty decent, or even the controller-optimized PS3 and PS4 renditions of Final Fantasy XIV, more often than not, you're left with a stripped-down interpretation that feels like an affront to all you hold dear. Civilization Revolution is a stripped-down interpretation, surely, but I don't know if it's that much of an affront. Maybe in a side or in a back. But this PS3 version of the famously, obscenely huge 4X staple holds its own and can serve as a nice primer, an introduction into one of the most intense of gaming genres. I'd lay some plot on you, but really, you craft the plot as you go, along the basic line of your civilization, led by insert great leader here, builds from sticks and stones the world domination. Just like its big brothers, that domination can take a number of forms, from absolute military victory to cultural ubiquity to being the first people to reach Alpha Centauri. From that basic starting point, you have the freedom to do those four X's mentioned earlier. Explore, expand, exploit, and exterminate at whatever pace you wish. That said, you also have competitors, other great leaders, displaced from their own geographic bounds, trying to expand their grasp of this hunk of randomly generated landmass. It's the standard civilization bit, really, just kind of altered for the console masses. You can't have super precise mouse and keyboard controls in this case, so you've got to adapt for the relatively clunky controller. And that's where CivRev stumbles. You got a thumbstick that moves your focus, sometimes, and directional buttons that cycle through units in a given region or move to the next region, where next is a constantly ambiguous term. It might be in a different conflict entirely, just a line so closely to your vertical axis that suddenly, bam, you're in Barcelona instead of moving to the next battalion of units stationed outside Minsk. Fortunately, while the controls are a bit grindy, the graphics are by and large capable of holding things together, in the main game at least. Other functions, such as the Civilopedia, while a useful resource for the history and edutainment aspects of the game, occasionally have egregious graphical mishaps. And this is actual footage of how choppy things get when you finally beat the game. Yeah. Civ makes this PS3 grind like hell, but you won't really notice it in the moment because you'll be too intensely focused on discovering the next best technology. The audio presentation isn't bad, and the background music, well, you're going to forget all about it because you'll either A, be too deep in diplomacy to hear anything, or B, have shut off the audio long ago because the garbled, vaguely ethnically flavored speech of your quote-unquote trusted advisors made you want to rip out your hair. There's a number of things that makes this revolution kind of weak as a civilization title, but regardless, it is civilization, and you're probably not going to wrest yourself from it until you've taken over the world. One more turn, man. Just one more turn. Oh, and you've got to choose next science to pursue, which means you should reassign some workers in Moscow for better efficiency. And... Uh, Lornado. 